Hello and a warm welcome to Federal Special Program Capital Beat. Supreme Court has rejected the petitions which sought the 100% verification of the VVPAT slips. It has also rejected the, uh, the petition where it said that we should return to the ballot system of voting. Now, what has the court allowed? The court has allowed the verification of the microcontroller of EVM by the manufacturers after the poll results on the request of the candidates. And uh, it has also issued a direction. And what is this direction? The direction clearly says that the containers carrying the symbol loading unit will be sealed in the presence of the polling agents. And this will be kept secured for 45 days. Now, uh, the bench of Justice Dipankar Gupta and Sanjeev Khanna categorically have rejected these petitions, issuing some directions saying that EVMs are simple, secure, and should be made user-friendly. And if I quote Justice Datta, he has said that a trend, and this was uh, why he delivered the verdict, and I'm going to quote him exactly, a trend has been fast developing of certain vested interest groups who have started undermining the achievements of nation. There seems to be a concerted effort to discredit and diminish the progress of this nation. The bench also has said that the petitioners could not establish that EVM violates the principles of free and fair elections. And petitioners also haven't been able to establish that it's a fundamental right of seeking 100% verification of the VV PAC slips. So what is the big import of this verdict given by the Supreme Court? And uh, as far as the voters' rights are concerned, as far as strengthening the election process in a democratic country like India is concerned, what does this verdict really mean? Joining me now is veteran Supreme Court lawyer Sanjay Hegde, who's also been one of the lawyers who were who were uh, fighting this case. Thank you so much, Mr. Hegde, for joining. And uh, your first thoughts at the verdict which has come, because generally there is a feeling that as far as the voters' rights are concerned and strengthening the voters' confidence, uh, you know, the, the verdict uh, stops short somewhere, you know, as far as these points are concerned. Well, nobody is ever satisfied with the verdict. Sometimes not even the winners are satisfied. And uh, courts then take it uh, as a signal that they have, uh, if that if there are two dissatisfied parties, then they have done uh, complete justice between the two. But having said all that, uh, the thing is that there has been a quite a degree of uh, uncertainty about the system, that the system has, since its inception, has somehow been gamed. Uh, very many suspicions existed. Those suspicions came to the court. The court says that there is not enough proof of any of those suspicions. The court went into the fact that uh, even with sample uh, VVPAT uh, checking and all that, nothing, uh, nothing really has been uh, shown to have gone wrong. And the court he said, uh, essentially uh, said that whatever the ECI has been doing so far is correct and it does not propose to uh, double guess uh, what the election commission has been doing. It has in its own way added a few more safeguards with regard to the symbol loading units which were uh, previously running fancy free. Then uh, it's also said that uh, People have the right to check that the microprocessors themselves have worked properly. And uh, this checking can only be after the election. The challenger will have to pay for the cost of the checking. And if after the checking, there is a defect which has been found, then, uh, then the money uh, will be refunded. I think that the court was building on past precedent because there, there were two there were two earlier precedents. One was the Subramaniam Swami case, one was the Chandra Babu Naidu case. The Subramaniam Swami case had more or less said that a VV patch should be introduced. The Chandra Babu Naidu case uh, had said that uh, some of them should be counted, but it was only a sample that had to be counted. Uh, the court hasn't gone much further and uh, probably what has, was already laid down earlier acted as a precedent, notwithstanding the fact that 
a period of nearly 10 years has happened since the first decision of the Supreme Court in Subramaniam Swami's case. And the technology has moved on. Uh, people's interaction with the systems has increased. Therefore, possibly there are increased doubts. The court is essentially has said that uh, you may have doubts, but you have not proved anything. No, but uh, what is the way out then? Like, uh, as far, uh, the court has said that you may have doubts, but uh, there is no proof, as you said. But what happens to the voters' confidence? Uh, will there be a review petition now? Uh, because I was listening very carefully to the hearings which happened over the three days. And you yourself, when you were contesting it in the court, you said that, my Lord, this is a work in progress. And like as compared to 2019, uh, you know, there could be some improvements as far as the voters' confidence is concerned. And you did say that, you know, it's a small price even if the counting has to take place for additional two, three days or four days. But that's, that aspect has been completely sidestepped. Uh, so what happens to the voter's confidence? Well, the voter has two choices. Either to accept the Supreme Court uh, and say that now that the Supreme Court has, uh, has certified it, I am confident. Or if the verdict doesn't satisfy and if the if the confidence level continues to be low and there is a decline in public participation in the elections as a result of that lack of confidence then maybe the government the next government whoever it is or the election commission may have to take further steps to satisfy just because the court has said yes what you have done so far is right does not mean that uh, people can just sit on their hands and uh, say, oh, we've got a certificate from the court. That's enough. We, we don't need to do anything further. Right. What is adequate today may not be adequate tomorrow. And as Absolutely. more things come about, or more thing, uh, as more uh, stratagems or more hacks are revealed, then maybe they, uh, if the government of the day or the election commission of the day does, doesn't look into them, the uh, path to the courts again is not barred but there will be three precedents now which the petitioners of a future day may have to displace right but uh, mr higdi uh, the, the the larger report of the verdict is uh, that apparently the supreme court is telling the voters that you don't have a choice and uh, you will have to live with the evms uh, whether you like it or you don't is that the message which is given by the court well, to, it, it, that can be one interpretation. See, the thing is that uh, the paper ballot had its own shortcomings. They, uh, we, we had instances where booths and entire uh, uh, voting stations used to be captured and things like that. So the EVM, which says that you can't have more than four votes cast in a minute, uh, acts as a check the counting of votes becomes easier in an EVM. All the, there are several factors of convenience which, uh, uh, which uh, make the EVM not constitutionally impermissible. But the question as to what should be the extent of citizen participation, should the citizen not have a tactile feel of voting? The, uh, after all, the little man in the little booth marking his choice. That was the base of uh, um, uh, elections for a very long time. Whether or not to return to that is not a question where, uh, where courts can decisively rule one way or the other. The court has not said that you will never return to the paper ballot. Mm. If the people determine and if their will is translated by government action or by election commission action that no, we shall return to the paper ballot, then I don't think the courts will come in and say, no, 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 you have to go in only through the EVM route. Mm. But what this judgment has said is that the EVMs are a perfectly rational uh, scheme of doing things. They are not unconstitutional. And uh, we, uh, 
with these safeguards, we've made it even more safe. Right. But uh, whatever safeguards, which uh, the directions which the Supreme Court has issued, does it address the basic premise of the entire petition that the EVMs could be tampered? Now, will the voter be 100% confident that, yes, the EVMs cannot be tampered? Because just because the Supreme Court has given these directions, your symbol loading unit is sealed. So uh, are we 100% sure that the EVMs cannot be tampered now? You can't be 100% sure of anything in life. And between could be tampered and are tampered, there is, there is a huge, diff, uh, huge gulf. And that gulf has not currently been bridged. No, but is it, but uh, I'm is not it, saying I'm not saying that at a future point of time, if somebody can conclusively show that this is how EVMs can be tempered, this is how EVMs have been gamed, and this is how uh, this is how uh, the result has been affected in the following uh, elections. That kind of evidence they will then force uh, both the administration and the courts to take a relook. At the current stage, what has been produced did not warrant a relook. The other thing that I think that the court uh, possibly got wrong was that uh, hearing it so close to the 2024 20, general elections took a lot of options off the table. Now, so just suppose the, the court had said, no, 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 these EVMs are wrong. We shall have only paper ballots. Then effectively, that would mean uh, postponing the elections because the entire uh, uh, paraphernalia would have to be reworked in a very major fashion. Uh, votes, ballots would have to be printed and things like that. So, therefore, when you had uh, this uh, hearing and the judgment so close after uh, uh, one round of the polling had already taken place, I don't think we could have expected much more than uh, safeguards being enhanced. And, and so one of the arguments made in court was that please don't take this as a final full stop in the process. And then it was in that context, I, I, I told them that uh, I, there is a lot of learning to be done and a lot, and a lot of a, uh, a progress which often happens from election to election. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I had requested that there would be further hearings after these elections and in the light of that experience, various things could be it could be checked out. But now the Supreme Court has chosen to give a final verdict and dispose of the the present petitions. Right. But uh, I also wanted to speak to you about what Justice uh, Datta had said, and I had quoted it in the in the beginning also that a trend has been fast developing of certain vested groups to undermine the achievements of the nation. There is a concerted effort to discredit uh, the progress of uh, this nation. Now, this was seen as a very uh, uncharitable sort of a comment made uh, by the Supreme Court judge without any offense, of course, meant to what he actually wanted to say. But uh, people had started writing on the social media saying that, you know, uh, uh, the, the bench was just not ready to accommodate the fact that there could be tampering, uh, people could mess around with the technology and then the people who are raising their doubts to call them people as uh, as a group which uh, which is trying to discredit uh, uh, the progress of the nation was something very, very uh, unexpected. Not only unexpected, problematic, deeply problematic for the institution itself. Because the same group that uh, fought the electoral bonds case, which five judges upheld. Now, if barely a couple of months ago, Based on that group's petition, the Supreme Court delivered such a major judgment. Two months later to say that the, these are people standing in the way of progress. I don't think that the judge really meant to cast too much of an aspersion or uh, say all that is being attributed to him on social media. Sometimes, you know, I've spoken to people who have been judges and uh, or who went on to become judges. They used to say that uh, if judges who dictate their judgments should sometimes be forced to write judgments by hand. When you dictate, then uh, and then there is not a uh, uh, very severe editing uh, function thereafter. Some, uh, sometimes first impressions uh, get to becoming problematic pieces of the law of the land. So, Mark Twain somewhere wrote, uh, when, uh, when, when angry, just swear. 
they you may swear and get it out of your system but then when you rewrite it when you re read it and as something which is meant for posterity and as a guide to the future then there are several things that should be edited the supreme court itself had once spoken of the alabad high court which had said that there is no more organized criminal force in the country than the up police that that was a classic judgment in uh, state of uh, up versus mohammed nooz case and the the supreme court had castigated the alabad high court and it was the great justice an mulla who had written that judgment and said that courts should not use harsh language so sometimes uh, these messages are uh, uh, forgotten and this kind of shooting the messenger becomes counterproductive to the institution you must remember that uh, it was uh, the same justice datta who had a, a problem with what was written in the tista settled what case yes that's right so at at best you can say that the petitioners are mistaken and and we think that they unnecessarily took the time of the court that's it yeah that's beyond, right but... beyond that uh, i don't think uh, uh, anything is called for no you you are right and, and why i asked you this question particularly mr hegde was that you know this judgment comes at a time when we see an election commission which is uh, which has almost at least looks like in a completely surrendered mode before the government uh, it it's uh, just not taking any action against a ruling party and then you have a judgment like this which uh, which favors which at least seems to be favoring and abetting the cause of the government so uh, wouldn't have wouldn't it have been right on the part of the court to at least issue some kind of an assurance in terms of the direction so that you know the voters uh, rights and also as far as strengthening the electoral process in a democratic country is concerned uh, maybe there were they could have been some lines as part of the judgment to to uh, to give this sort of an assurance or maybe i'm expecting uh, too much from the from the bench no you as a journalists and as a lay person are entitled to have many expectations we as lawyers may have other expectations and as men and women of law whether on this side of the uh, bar or that side of the bench anybody he can always uh, with hindsight say no no if i was there i would have written x or i would have written y uh, the thing is that you know we uh, i often think that we lawyers have several chances to get our submissions right what may what doesn't find favor with one set of judges at a later uh, date can find favor with another set but judges especially in the supreme court barely have a five year term mm. and they have to get it right all the time so sometimes they don't get it right so uh, how does one look in the final lap of the questions uh, what does this final verdict look like of course it leaves a room uh, for the people for the civil uh, civil uh, society groups to you know maybe start another public move uh, uh, public movement and then come back with another pil or another case uh, in the supreme court but uh, what is the larger import of this uh, third part of this entire series of what we have just seen from the supreme court verdict coming out yesterday the supreme court has basically said that what has been done so far is good we can keep strengthening it but we cannot indefinitely keep uh, uh, keep uh, hearing uh, fanciful fears or suspicions without solid concrete evidence now this is a kind of catch 22 situation you can have doubt you can have suspicions but many things can't be proven unless there is a willingness to open out you even the election commission uh, during the hearing the court itself said that you know many of these doubts that they are raising you are answering now had you answered it earlier in the public domain all these questions wouldn't have come to court right. so there is uh, institutions have to be have to open themselves out to scrutiny and audit 
that would that would is possibly the way to go and there should be continuous audit and the desire for audit and safeguards can certainly not be seen as impeding the progress of the nation hmm. that's right nations uh, you know progress more when its citizens hold institutions up to great scrutiny but also this line coming from justice datta saying that you know you cannot distrust a system now is the court trying to tell the people that people who are coming with doubts people who are coming with certain suspicions in their mind and if they approach the court they do not have the right to do that i mean i i i completely uh, read the verdict like that you can say that uh, the supreme court's view as expressed by justice datta in his concurring opinion is that uh, mere suspicion is not enough to launch a petition maybe you should do more homework and uh, let me give you an example from history uh, uh, when raj narayan came to mr shanti bhushan during the uh, saying that uh, his election in alabad was affected he had some fanciful theory that uh, some special chemicals were at were put on the ballot paper and therefore ballots got changed and all that and it was mr shanti bhushan who then told him no that will not work and then they went on building up a case based on strictly on election law and strictly on the fact that uh, some government servants had helped in the election or they some people continued to be government servants when when they were also election agents of uh, the then prime minister that was yashpal kapoor whose resignation had not been accepted by the government and then that was what found favor with the alabad high court uh, maybe a rigorous uh, mm, say uh, a, a rigorous adherence to the uh, principles of evidence and proof might be wa uh, wanted and here uh, the court may also not have been charitable in the sense that many of these petitions were filed quite some time ago and then they uh, in 2019 2020 but they were heard only so close to the elections i would i would like to see well researched petitions being heard without the pressure of an an immediate election but uh, uh, there was also i mean one uh, allegation coming on the social media and even the people in the legal circles were talking that you know there was a deliberate attempt to postpone this uh, hearing for too long and then i don't know all of a sudden you know we heard that there would be a hearing on the vv evms and vv pack so uh, do you think there was a deliberate delay uh, do you sense that that kind of a, uh, of a doubt in your mind <laughs> uh, well whether deliberate or not there was a delay that can't that can't be uh, uh, explained away but, but often it's a question of priorities there are so many cases where uh, it, the people at the receiving end want an early hearing but uh, as i told you the supreme court uh, has judges who are there barely for 5 years 3 years and there's a constant series of retirements okay to set aside a specific amount of time for one for one matter alone uh, sometimes unless the fire is almost close to the forest uh, mm. it, kind of corrective action doesn't happen so i i think it you know, on the whole it was a positive that the matter was heard even though close to the elections uh the process of hearing also was conducted aired in a manner so that many of the country's doubts were aired if not addressed so it, it is rare that uh, the election commissions uh, representative coming out on a platform which was open to public uh, view and explaining how the process worked i'm sure that the citizenry of the country at the end of the day has now been more informed if not fully satisfied absolutely you're right sir and uh, i i think we'll have to just uh, wait and see how these things unfold but for now at least supreme court has said that whether you like it or not but you have to live with the evm still the time maybe we do not i mean we we see another petition being filed in the supreme court thank you so much uh, mr
Hegre for joining on the Federal and one appeal to the viewers who are watching this interview. Subscribe to our channel, send us your feedback and stay tuned to the Federal. Thank you. Subscribe to the Federal's YouTube page for more news and updates.